Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Sunday stream. So uh, today, what we're going to talk about is what we talk about every Sunday, which is how is the portfolio doing, and what is the plan moving forward. So we uh, I got a bit to discuss. Let's just jump right in. First of all, I think you all know the prices. I don't need to go over this. But what I found interesting today was that uh, there's been some new capital from somewhere, because forever, as I can remember, it's uh, Mark has been around 1.15, 1.2, somewhere around there. Now we're at uh, 1.3, 1 trillion, 319 billion and rising fast. So, I mean, we'll see what it all comes to. And uh, hopefully people will see the light and they'll figure it out that, hey, maybe I should get in this train before things blow up. And maybe that ETF gets approved. Now, I have been very vocal about my thoughts on that, but hey, who knows? I mean, it looks like things are going pretty positive. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Here is the portfolio. And I wanted to do was just show everybody essentially how, what the potential gains could be. And what I wanted to do is just take a look at the portfolio, just doing something very simple, very, very simple, which would be to just put in $10 per day. And I want to start this on September 1st, uh, 2023. But I backed this up for the starting day just a little bit, August 30, just so I get all the days in, all the days in line. And what I want to do is just show you like what's up and what's down. And also, this isn't fair because this is what it would look like just if we started on September. Remember, I've been dollar cost averaging since 2022. So this isn't correct. So this is what we have if you just started in September, which would have been a pretty fantastic month. I just thought it would be fun to do September because September was like the crappiest, is, was supposed to be the crappiest. That's in traditional markets and, and crypto is supposed to go down. Uh, September is rectember. And then October is October. And so far, October has been st sticking steady with the narrative. But as far as September, it did the exact opposite and actually went up pretty well. So if we're taking a look at the things that I personally dollar cost average either every day or every week, which would include Chainlink, Solana, Bitcoin, Cardano, Matic, Near, Doge, ETH, Arbitrum, Algorand, Dot, and Atom. I've also added a couple of different uh, gaming tokens, but I'll give them those later at some point. But this is this is the main core. This is what I'm doing. And I got to tell you, I'm, I was pleasantly surprised when I took a look at the day. I'm like, I'll be damned. Uh, everything's in the green. So, I mean, that's what you want to be as as an investor. Dollar cost averaging. Um, you know, I got made of, you know, people would always ask me, like, why, why you keep doing that? Why don't you just wait or do that? I always said the same thing because I'm not that smart. And I don't know exactly where things are going to go. I don't think I can predict what's going to happen. So I do the same thing. Now, I do this thing called dynamic DCAing. You could find that video here on uh, in the YouTube channel or on Dan Teaches Crypto. But today it's looking, like I said, pretty good. Uh, let's see. If we take a look, uh, Chainlink, since September 1st, roughly is up 57%. I always like Chainlink. I know there's other oracles out there, but it seems like Chainlink has the foothold. And it's kind of like browsers uh, back in the day of the early internet. I mean, there was like a thousand browsers out there, but then in, in the end, Google won. Yeah, I don't see too many of you using Ask Jeeves uh, to do searches. I think a lot of you guys are just using Google, which is pretty much what everybody uses. So I think Chainlink is one of those oracles that is going to kill everything and is going to be that oracle space to pull an outside aid in the blockchain. Solana, which I always felt was you know a reasonably good chain. I think some people absolutely love it. Uh, I don't, I'm not married to any one thing, but I thought Solana just got a bad rap because of uh, scam, wankman, fraud, uh, and FTX. So I thought it would bounce back, and sure enough, it did. And I, of course, Bitcoin is actually my third. <laughs> it's funny. Like I've always said, Bitcoin is, is the safest play in the most unstable asset class. And Bitcoin is uh, up 26% since September. Uh, Cardano's up 15%. Number four, I'll be damned. Pretty good. Matic 14, Near, which I always thought, Near, I, I just don't get why it's not really taken off yet. I, I think the technology is great. It has sharding. It's got a lot of different projects building on it. It's, I mean, we're going to take a look at DAP Radar and just see how, how fantastic it's doing, but get only up 12%. Doge, 10, ETH, Arbitrum, Algorand, Dot, and Atom. Atom, geez, 3.1%. Uh, Tearing through But again, all positive, pretty happy. So that looks pretty good if you would have done in September, which I did not. So let's make that 100% clear. Let's move ourselves back, shall we? And take a look at, uh, let's go back to 2022 and see, because this is pretty much when I started. And for the longest time, I mean, let's just go back here. 
I mean, for the most, I was underwater forever. But that's exactly how I did it in 2018 and 2019. I didn't really care because I'm like, well, I think things are going to go. And it was just a bad time frame. But now, as we come over here, it's not too bad. But I'm still underwater for most of them, right? Doge, I'm down 0.7. Matic, I'm down 20%. Dot 20, 29, 38, 55 for Arbitrum. Arbitrum, again, one of my favorite plays. It's a new, it's a new one. And uh, I think it's going to do really well in the bull market. But underperforming right now. But again, still, Chainlink, Solana. And Bitcoin, carrying out number three. And that's August 30, 2022. Let's go back even more because, I mean, I was, I want to say March, mid-March, I was started in 2022. And, but, 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 well, Chainlink still beats Bitcoin. I'll be damned. So Chainlink is up 54%. Uh, Bitcoin, 42%, Solana, 33%, Ethereum, 10.4%. So again, there is something to be said for altcoins, but they're risky, man. They're really risky, but these are the things you can do. And then for everybody, I always like to, to, to point this out, which is, I know people would say, but, you know, that's pretty crappy for, you know, uh, for two years of investing. Look, it's just like your other assets that you may own, uh, whatever that may be. But I will say like, if you're a real estate investor, you don't look at the price of your house every couple of days. You don't really care because you get into it for the long haul. You don't look at the price of land uh, every week or every two weeks. It's just a long term play. And this is what I think uh, this is one of the hardest asset classes we can have. It is the most finite. It's not even scarce. It's finite, which will be Bitcoin. Now, the other ones aren't uh, finite or really even scarce. You can keep producing them. But I just think that uh, this is the asset class that so far has beat everything. And that would be real estate investment trust. That would be precious metals. That would be the large caps and small caps and everything in between. It would be Bitcoin. So I still have a lot of uh, faith in that. And that's what we have. So that is where we are for right now. Um, but uh, and I, there's this phrase that I say and people pointed out to me that I'm wrong, which they are correct, actually. And the phrase is. Um, time in the market is more important than timing the market. And I always talk about that. And people say, you know, Rob, that's, that's wrong. And you know what? You're right. Time in the market is more important than timing the market as far as buying. As far as buying, uh, I've, got a lot of, I've got some people in the chats who have told me that they actually bought at the peak of 2021. But thanks to dollar cost averaging, they've been able to do quite well, bring their cost basis down. Now they're actually in the green, whatever different tokens that they're talking about, or maybe even Bitcoin. So for that one, I, I still think that time in the market is more important than timing as far as buying. However, for selling, and that is the big thing, for selling, if you want to take profits, some of you may not want to. I know some of you, this sounds ridiculous when I say this, but some of you are never going to sell your Bitcoin. That's just the truth. Some of you will never sell because you, you say that you're not going to. And I just assume you were going to not do that because that's what you say. I don't, I'm not your dad or a financial advisor. You do whatever the hell you want. But um for all these things that, that are happening uh, as far as like selling, it is the most important thing as far as like timing. Because if you were timing the market and decided to say, well, I bought Bitcoin at 67,000 and now it's November 17th, 2022. So I'm just going to sell it at, you know, $15,700. Time in the market does not matter because uh, you just got, you just sold the bottom, which is the absolute worst. So when I talk about, timing you're gonna have to time it a little bit as far as like selling and that's why we three or four days ago we took a look at uh this video which is a video i i did like a year or so ago where i talked about seven or eight different indicators i'm looking at of when i'm selling uh i'll link that in the description but definitely take a lot take a watch of that video again and again and again and try to figure out what's your best indicator or what you want to do moving forward because i'm telling you right now everybody knows how to buy the dip everybody knows how to dollar cost average it's not rocket science what's going to be tough and it's it's not that hard to sell but it's tough to get your mind wrapped around it and that's it so let me know what you think about that in the comment section as far as the portfolio i think uh, things are doing okay so far and uh, we'll just keep doing the same thing there was a question which i'll get into the q a about well rob uh, when are you going to uh, uh, stop buying Bitcoin or have you started to buy Bitcoin again? And I will answer that in the Q&A a little bit. 
But before we do that, there was a, a tweet. Let me see. This is from uh, Token Terminal. And it took a look at the 30-day change of active users, daily active users. And Cosmos, and again, I think this is the, the, this is the odd thing about the underperforming assets. It doesn't really matter about, well, I can't say it doesn't matter, but the price does matter because let's be honest, we're here. Not all of us are in it for the tech, right? There's a lot of people that are just like, hey, you know, I invest into this. I put my hard money into it. Where are those fat gains? And for some of these different uh, projects, they're great. They work. People are using it. But for whatever reason, uh, it's just the price isn't going up. And I want to take a look at just some of these metrics you should probably take a look at for the long term. Again, if we take a look at uh, traditional markets or our crypto market, we can see that, uh, like Warren Buffett said, uh, stocks is uh, in, the, in the or equities in the beginning, it is a it is like a voting machine, but in the long run, it is a weighing machine. So right now, everybody's just voting for what they actually think it is, and they're speculating. But in the end, as time goes on, it's all about the utility and what they can actually do. And Cosmos, I think, does really well. Anyhow, so we're taking a look at these active users, 182% 30-day change, which is pretty good. But then when I took a look over here, and I see this, this active users per day, Cosmos does pretty good, 33,000. But look at CeeLo, 123,000 active daily users pancake swap 103,000 bitcoin 664,000 near again the one that i think is awesome 824,000 uniswap has a great utility if you want to get all those those crazy degen plays you need to go to uniswap or some other dexes 77,000 zero x multiverse x nothing 11,000 metamask solana almost 100,000 it's pretty good and look at bnb chain 1.04 million that's a boatload Arbitrum, one of my favorites, 134,000. Ethereum, 312. Let's see. Polygon, again, great for gamification. L2, well, it's actually a sidechain. 324,000. And Tron at 1.49 million. Don't dismiss Tron. When I went to the uh, uh, Korean blockchain week in South Korea, everybody talked about Tron. Like it was like the best thing of all time. And it has to do with their stable coin. They have it and everybody uses it over there. So now I understand what the whole fuss is about. So, yeah, when I take a look at these, I'm like, these metrics are kind of, you know, positive for the things you want to look at. Now we got to take a, take a look at, let's just break that down, though, because when you're looking at on-chain data, it's funny. It just is funny. There is a website called Dapp Radar. I link this in the description. You can check this out yourself. And we take a look at all chains as far as the top blockchain dApps, dApps that are being used. The one that is in the, in the top, every single time I come to this website, every single time, and you can, you can verify this by just coming back this, this week, you're going to see near at the top and Kai Ching is the app. I don't know what the hell Kai Ching is. I don't know what that is. But if you take a look at it, unique active wallets are UAW, 739,000. And the percent of UAW, what is this? The percent change, the difference between the current and 24 hours, it's up 32% in 24 hours. That's not bad. But you take a look at the volume, there's nothing going on. What is Kai Cheng? I can't find a website. I can't find a social. But apparently on Near Club, it's some kind of shopping app. Save time and money. Pay less if you pay with KI, with Kai C. I guess that's their token. Hundreds of shops earn extra Kai C while playing and shopping on Kai. So that's, I'm going to guess this is Southeast Asia type of, uh, of play. But it's built on the Near protocol. And Near is one of the fastest blockchains that's out there. So that's interesting. Uh, Alien Worlds, this is a game. Farmer's World is a game on wax. Sweat Economy, I don't need to talk about that. I think everybody knows that on, on this channel and some other ones down the line. So if we take a look at this, this is another metric to take a look at is who's building on it and who has one of the biggest dApps that is out there. And actually, well, let's just go to this one. So we talk about these dApps and who's building on what and how great that is, right? Fantastic. But just because you have transactions going on, it's not a really great indicator because we all know that you can you can fudge these transactions. You can move things back and forth. You can do some kind of voting and say, oh, see, those are on-chain transactions. Aren't we awesome? No, it's not that awesome. It just actually kind of sucks. What you really want to take a look at in some way, shape, or form is the fees. And the fees, if you go over to, oops, sorry, DeFi Llama, and you just click on those fees revenue, you can do simple and advanced. 
And we can sort this by fees seven day, fees 30 day, and fees for one year. I just did the fees for one year and, and uh, took a look at the top. You know what the top is for fees? Ethereum. Now, is that a great thing? You got to say to yourself, well, Rob, Ethereum's gas fees are astronomically high and they suck. And you are 100% correct. However, uh, if you take a look at what's being built on Ethereum, it's still the biggest out there. And of course, yes, the fees are high, but guess what? People are voting with their pocketbook. And even though it's ridiculously high, they're still using it. So there's still demand for that. So that's why I still dollar cost average onto Ethereum. Next one would be Uniswap, Lido, Tron again, like I talked about. And there's Bitcoin, 337 million, which, uh, you know, as the uh, network gets taxed, more people are using it. PancakeSwap, OpenSea, Convex Finance, Aave, Maker, Arbitrum. But look at these, look at how it goes down as far as fees go. So remember, as time moves on, people aren't going to pay a ton of money to be on Ethereum. They're going to use L2s or side chains to reduce those fees because no one is going to pay $65, $75, $125 for an NFT that's worthless on Ethereum. They'll pay a couple pennies for a worthless NFT or some kind of transaction using an L2 side chain. Sure. But on this one, I mean, right now it's good. I don't know what's going to happen in the future. Polygon, 28, see, there you go, 28 million. Optimism, 31 million, and so on and so forth. So if you're taking a look at like where the adoption is happening, you can, you can fake a lot of on-chain transactions. Talk to anybody who's better at this than, than me as far as uh, on-chain data. But as far as like paying with your pocketbook, that's where the rubber meets the road. And in these like top 30 or so, take a look at these. Quick Swap, MUX, Radium, uh, I don't know, Maestro. I saw, and Solana. 25, 14 million. But again, it's super cheap. They're running 14 million. So there's that. And then lastly, and, and this, this is the thing. I like Cardano. I like Cardano. But if you take a look on this page, I did, this doesn't show up for whatever reason. Uh, let's see. There's Tron. Let's see, Optimism. There's Optimism. It there, but I don't see, I don't know if it's just not recorded or what. So, there's one more site you might want to take a look at. It's called cryptofees.info. Again, I'll link that in the description. You can uh, discover this for yourself and you figure out which ones are actually being used again. And this, these transactions are, you know, neck and neck. So, uh, I mean, the same across the board. Ethereum one day fees is 3.4 okay, million. I thought it was a billion. I was like, geez, that's a lot of money. Okay, 3.4 in one day. Uh, then the seven-day average, average across the board, almost 5 million. Okay. Uh, Uniswap, again, second. Bitcoin in three and so on and so forth. But again, on this one, uh, actually Cardano is there, but it's super low. And again, I think that's actually, I don't know why it shows up here, but it doesn't show up on DeFi Llama. I don't understand why that is. And I got to tell you what's funny about in, over here on DeFi Llama, where the hell is it? If you keep going down, Sweet Mary and Joseph, even Radio Shack, I guess has a crypto. <laughs> and it's pulling in a whopping $9,000 in one year. Radio Shack. I don't know, I found that funny. And, uh, but you don't see the Cardano in there, but you see it over here. So again, just take a look at the crypto fees and, and go from there. And lastly, before we wrap up, uh, there was a question that somebody asked me a couple of days ago, three or four days ago, about the transfer from uh, Polygon or Matic over to Pol, P-O-L. And they said, hey, are you, are you doing anything as far as like the, you know, uh, transferring things over or, or what's going on? I, I said, I don't think you have to do anything. This is right from Polygon.technology, the blog post. I'll link in the description. You can find it. But the FAQ says, is there anything I need to do today as Polygon? POS, Polycon, EVM user, or Matic holders. And they say, nothing. We can't stress the NUS. Can't stress this enough. The testnet release is part of a standard security practice. And the new PIPs released today are being proposed for community feedback. Like you join the governments, blah, 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 blah. Okay. And if you're a node operator or a staker, you can read that right there. But this is in uh, uh, all about the Polygon to pull POL contracts. So... As far as I can read, there's nothing that you have to do, us as Polygon holders, and that is it for today. So look, if you like today's video, 
give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. But that's it. So thanks so much. Adios.